it's me, Cisco Morrison. Here's what's coming up on Garden with Cisco. We'll show you the four secrets to longer lasting dahlias. Go behind the scenes at the granddaddy of destination gardens. Turn your bounty of veggies into lasagna cupcakes. Yep, you heard it right. And it's time to get this plant pick in the ground, especially if you like it hot. All this in a great garden to visit in Auburn, coming up on Gardening with Cisco. I'm Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. We are in Auburn today and have discovered a true gem. Look at this. I had no idea Auburn had a public garden like this. It's amazing. I didn't either. And you know, it was about a year ago, the Seuss Creek Botanical Garden opened. 22 acres. It's amazing. All kinds of gardens. Mm -hmm. Check out this double border. 450 feet long. Oh. This was inspired by the great Dame of Gardening, Gertrude Jekyll. Jekyll? I like that name. That's a good one. Well, you know, it's time to actually do a little bit more work in your garden. Have you noticed the dahlias are starting to fade out for the end of the season? But we have four things you can do right now to help keep them blooming better. I'm going to start crying. We're heading into fall. <laughs> I and, think I'm going to uh, cry too. The nice thing about dahlias is a lot of times these flowers just stick around forever. Yeah, you know, oftentimes these are still blooming after Thanksgiving if you do the right thing. I was going to say because you need to do a few things yeah, here. Yeah, here we go. So put a little stake. So go out if you have something flopping over and stake them up. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Hey, not bad. I yeah. can hardly even see it in there. Now, this is Bishop of Landoff, by it's the way. Gorgeous. One nice of the most red. Gorgeous. Yeah. But you know what? If we don't keep deadheading this, we're in big trouble. I already fertilized it in August. Okay. You know, which I hope everybody did because it's too late now. Because you know? there's a lot of blooms, but then there's a lot of dead guys, like this one here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so where do you yeah. want me to take them down all the way down here? Well, I think since are there anything, yeah, nope. there's nothing good on nope. that, I'd go way down. Okay. Yep. And look at how hard it is to tell, like, Megan, oh, that's over yeah. the hills. So, and that's pretty much and, over and the hill. And so since there's nothing coming out of this, I'm going to go way down. Okay. The plant gets a little smaller, you know. Exactly. But, uh, but you're still going to preserve the one flower, the flowers it. that you and, have. And, you know, if these things go to seed, and that's what will happen if we don't deadhead them. Uh-huh. Then it goes, I've done my job. I'm going to take the rest of the summer off, get a good suntan, do nothing else. So we're doing the dead head. We've staked him. Now what are we going to do? Remind Ooh. everybody, you got to keep yes. these moist. If they dry out, that's it. They yep. stop blooming for the whole summer. If you got a system, run it. If you've got, you know, a hose that can reach this far, use right. that. Or... Now there's one last thing, Megan. Okay. And that is, if we don't want to have to be watering this every minute. Who, me? Uh, I love watering. Uh, yeah, you're the best water I ever met. Oh, lot of this is expensive <laughs> point for you. <laughs> okay, we got to put some compost under oh, there. Oh, okay. You know, I did earlier in the season, but that's the way it goes. It kind of just goes sure. away. It kind of eats it up. Yeah. And this will uh, Lock hold it in. moisture in there. Yeah. So, and it looks nice, too. It does. I love fresh mulch on oh, the garden. Me so, too. you don't need to fertilize, but you do need to keep them well watered, deadhead. And again, dahlias, the more you cut, the more they bloom. Yep. Make they both love heads. it. They do. <laughs> and that way, hey, you never know. We could be whistling, we wish you a Merry Christmas and seeing our dahlias. <laughs> well, or maybe not. Uh, I kind of thought that one. Well, you can always hope. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Seuss Creek Botanical Gardens in mm -hmm. Auburn. All right, now, Megan, yeah. right now we're going to give everybody a behind-the-scenes look at the granddaddy of all Northwest Destination Gardens. You've got to be talking about Butchart Gardens, and we found the best time to explore that garden is before the gates even open. For thousands of visitors every day, rain or shine, Butch Art Gardens is a colorful oasis, 50 acres of beauty and peace, but it's not always serene. <laughs> Beginning at 5 o'clock every morning, a battalion of 50 gardeners noisily invades the grounds. Cutting, 
clipping, hauling away the dead and dry. In short, polishing the jewel before the day's first admirers get a glimpse. We like the things to remain a bit of a mystery, so we'll do a lot of the work before they come, and when they show up, it's done as if it just happened. The Butchart family rarely reveals the fuss and fury behind the scenes. That's the way Jeannie Butchart wanted it. She literally planted the first seeds that transformed an ugly limestone quarry into one of the world's most famous private gardens. Often when she was working in the garden, visitors would, uh, uh, who were all cordially welcome to come into and stroll around the estate, um, she, she would even pretend uh, to be someone else. So just what did we learn by visiting before visiting hours? For starters, there's more than a thousand years of gardening experience among the staff. How many years have you been in here now, Tony? Uh, 42. 42 years at the gardens. And there's another secret we need to share. Just because it's sunny in Victoria does not mean it won't be raining at the gardens. In Victoria, we get something like 26 inches of rain. Out here, we get about 50 to 60 inches of rain. But without that rain, you wouldn't have this. Okay, Megan, we're going from highbrow to the farm. Yeah? We're going to Nash's Organic Farm in the Dungeness Valley, and we're going to give tips on how to grow the world's best vegetable. Brussels sprouts. Have you ever met another vegetable that people either love them or hate them? It doesn't matter. <laughs> My wife hates them so bad, you should see the look she makes when she eats one. <laughs> hey, but boy, you grow them great out here at Nash's Organic Produce, and this is a real beauty. Now, what's the secret to Brussels sprouts? They don't like to get stressed out when they either don't make sprouts or they, you know, they just kind of um, will get big and fluffy at the bottom. That's a sign that they've been kind of stressed out. Ah, okay. Um, you let them, you mean they get too dry or too wet or too like hot that? Too there's hot. a lot of places are in the northwest that get a lot warmer during the summer than we get here in Dungeness ah, and okay. so the Brussels sprout plant doesn't really like getting really hot if you get 90 degrees that's hot for a Brussels sprout this kind of weather this is Brussels sprout weather ah. here they love this just temperate cool you know, damp in the fall. Okay, now I got some questions for you. One of them is I've heard that if they're not ripening up, you should like pinch the top off. Sure, yeah. So how would you do that? You would just go into here and you you go right down into the growing tip of it and just kind of pop it off. That's all there is to it. Look at that gorgeous critter right there. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> hey, and it really helps if they get a freeze, huh? Oh, it makes them so much sweeter and, and richer flavored. We've had some great freeze the last few days, so these Brussels sprouts, they're ready for harvest. Oh man, well, you know what? I'm tired of looking at them. I gotta try one. Oh, oh my God. That is as sweet as a piece of candy. Well, Scott, thank you so much for coming out and telling us about Brussels sprouts. You grow great ones. You're welcome, Cisco. You can buy Nash's delicious Brussels sprouts at their newly opened store in the Dungeness Valley. Why does anybody want Brussels sprouts? We need asparagus, people. That's what I like. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Seuss Creek Botanical Garden here in Auburn. I tell you, this place is gorgeous. The colors, the richness, the textures, the flowers, it's so beautiful. And then Cisco has to go and say, lasagna cupcakes? <laughs> what the hey, heck? I didn't believe it either when Lynn said we're making lasagna <laughs> cupcakes, but oh, la, la, they are so delicious. The perfect supper for a busy weekday night. <laughs> Okay, so I see all these harvest vegetables here. Let me think. Lasagna. Uh, yes, but cupcakes. Cupcakes. Trust me. Cupcakes. <laughs> okay, we're going to make some filling. We're going to saute all these great okay. ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to get my pan nice and hot. And you can just give, me, give it to me, baby. Okay. I'll take the onions and the peppers and the mushrooms. All right, you ready already? All the healthy stuff? Yes, I am okay. ready. Beautiful. So domestic mushrooms now, a little bit later, I might put some chanterelles into Ooh, this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and some peppers. You could do fennel, you could do eggplant, all the things you love. You can oh, just go really? In okay, um, I'll wait on that. Oh, that's, some, right. that's some kale. We'll let this cook down for a few minutes, and then we'll add the kale. 
Okay, so we've sweated those down nicely. So now we're going to add our um, kale. Dinosaur, Dinosaur kale. kale. Oh, Isn't that boy. beautiful? I love that I stuff. do too. Easy to grow too. Yeah, and you've had kale in cupcakes before, right? Uh, not yet. <laughs> cupcakes. Yeah. I gotta see these cupcakes. Yeah, I keep telling you, trust me. Okay, so um, this is our gorgeous combination, and I've let it cool just a little bit, okay? okay. And so um, we're, I'm just going to put this in here. Now, what is in here now is just a ricotta cheese, right. okay? And then we're going to continue with the cheese blend. You've got some mozzarella and some freshly grated parmigiana okay. there. So just go oh. ahead and put that whole thing yeah. in. Yeah. Man, this Not is going to be an interesting right. cupcake. That's all I know. So which you and want? And that's some fresh basil. Go basil. ahead and add that. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll throw a couple of eggs in there. So what we're now making is sort of a classic lasagna filling. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Give me a nice generous pinch okay. of the um, salt and a little bit of nutmeg. And you can just go ahead and put that whole thing oh, in. Okay. So just a little pinch of nutmeg. And then lots of cracked black pepper. And we're going to stir that up. And then we'll get the rest of our ingredients. And I will show you how this all works. Cupcake. <laughs> okay. So... I guess I'm seeing <laughs> cupcake here. Okay. Oh, la, la. So these are silicone muffin tins because you don't want to use the paper because they're um, they Too get mushy. mushy. Yeah. Okay. So I just cooked lasagna noodles and uh -huh. just took a little cookie cutter and cut out shapes. Oh. Yeah. So I just did um, small ones and a little bit larger ones. Oh, a little for the bottom. Uh huh. Oh, See, I'm getting it. I'm got getting it. it. Very nicely done. <laughs> okay. I'll do one and then I'll right. turn them over to you. Yeah, okay. you betcha. All right. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to set this in the bottom here and just kind of tuck it in don't worry about putting it all the way in because as you add your ingredients it'll That'll it'll tuck it, it back in okay. and then this is the simplest thing in the world i sauteed some pcc italian sausage and just oh. added some good marinara sauce oh. to it okay so a nice little meat Maybe sauce there yeah. and then here's our beautiful cheese filling so oh, yeah. we're going to do you know we're doing about a tablespoon of each thing and that goes in there like that okay you want to press at this point you want to start pressing them down in okay okay so now we're going to go to our larger noodle we're going to do another layer press that right. in like that yep another layer of the meat sauce oh. yeah like a cupcake it can make a cupcake wow <laughs> i gotta see it to okay, believe right yeah. here but trust me okay and then this goes on top you're going to press that down just a little bit like that all right another little layer of the meat sauce on top oh yeah and you don't have to spread it all the way to the edges because it stays okay. moist when it cooks. And then you just put that on top. And then a last little bit of oh. the cheese here. Oh, man. And this was our mozzarella and our parmigiana ah, blend. The mozzarella. Yes. And then just, you know, for a little extra color, oh, I took cool. some little slices of red. <laughs> oh, I love that. So now what we're going to do when we get these finished is we're going to put a little piece of parchment paper on top and then wrap the whole thing in foil and put it in the oven. How long do we got to cook this one? Well, that one goes about 30 minutes. Oh. Yeah, I know. Poor baby. Okay. Oh, I can't wait oh, to see these hurts. things. You have been very patient. All right, so there's <gasps> our little oh. oh. Isn't that fun? I'll be the son of a beetle hopper. <laughs> Those are really lasagna cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> My gosh. So I have to tell you, we're almost there. Almost? Yeah. I like to put them back in for about five minutes or so and just let the cheese get a little bubbly. I'm sorry. Of course you know what a patient guy I am. I tell you what, this will give you time to get, you, to get yourself a plate and a fork. Huh? All right, it's a All deal. All right, okay. Okay, here you are, my oh, dear. Finally. Happy birthday. Oh. I mean, uh, ah, glad ah, was my friend. Lasagna cupcakes. <laughs> this is the cupcake I'm having for my next there you birthday. Go. Beautiful. I've got to say, those were darn cute. Oh, and I yeah. love the fact that you can make them ahead and stick them in the freezer. I am all about that. But I have a feeling in order to get Erica to eat them, I'd have to put frosting on them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you, what? they taste so good, they'll never make it into the freezer. <laughs> bin. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from my new favorite <laughs> garden, the Seuss Creek Botanical Garden. Well, as you know, it is sadly or happily fall, and it's time to get our plant pick in the ground. But this one is not a flower, even though it has been called the stinking rose. 
beautiful cold spring. Summer's over, heading into fall, and it's time to plant your garlic. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah, you know, I always plant it in October. You could plant late September, any time in October. Oh, really? And so, um, well, obviously, we need to get the cloves. Yeah, so I'm yeah. going to go ahead and do that. And Let me guess what kind this is. This is a hard neck garlic so they don't you can't really braid these oh, kinds. I was gonna say it is hard it is hard and they only you can only store them for about six weeks uh-huh but this is the strong stuff Ooh. Megan if you bake with this it'll make your eyes water and if you bite into one raw it'll buckle your knees ah, you know? <laughs> so you don't if you're gonna plant garlic you don't want to yeah. go to the store and get a clove of garlic no, because it can have a disease sometimes they spray it so it won't uh, you know germinate but also Sometimes it has a disease. It won't be bad for you, but if you get it, you can never plant oh. garlic in your soil for years. Interesting. Okay, so, so I got a couple going here. Yeah, I broke yeah. one open too. Good. Um, and so what are we going to do now? So we got to plant them two inches deep. So two inches deep in there with with the fat end down. Yeah. Do -do -do. Yep. Like that? Cover it up. And go two inches again? Yep. Yep. And My that's about the right spacing right there, too. Okay. Here, I'll get you a nice big one here. Okay. All right. Again, fat side down, the little pointer yep. guy up. So you notice what we're not putting in there, Megan? I'm guessing fertilizer. Yeah. You don't fertilize garlic until spring. In early March, then wow. you can start with something high in nitrogen like blood meal or fish food. Okay. Every two weeks, you're going to fertilize these until the summer solstice. You want to grow as many leaves as you can. Because the more leaves you get, then the bigger the clove's going to be. Really? So you fertilize them like mad in spring. But once summer solstice comes, they don't grow any more leaves. You start cutting off on the watering and uh, basically let them harden off in the ground. And the leaves keep dying. And as the leaves die off, once there's about four leaves left, dig them up and take a look. Because they lose a sheath, a protective sheath, when you have about four leaves. You got to harvest right then. If you wait too long, there's not enough shoots. It opens up and the dirt gets in. Oh, la, la. And then the howling really starts. Then the howling does start. <laughs> so I'm trying to break some of these off. Here you ah, go. Thanks, Megan. So get out there right now and plant your garlic. I love it. Don't have to worry about fertilizer or anything. And then you'll be thankful when yeah. next summer comes around. You won't have fall. to worry about vampires or fleas. Why fleas? Well, I, some people believe that if you eat lots of garlic, it, <laughs> if your dog does, it keeps the fleas away. I don't dog personally have fleas. <laughs> Know about you, but I'm having a great time cruising around the Seuss Creek Botanical Garden. This one here is called the Rain Garden. It is so lush, gorgeous, and colorful. I think it is amazing, and it's just about a year old. Can't believe it. I can't believe it either. Can't be only a year old. You know, I talked to Marie Skagen, uh -huh. the owner of this place. Yeah. He told me all the gardens are this beautiful, and they're all this inspired. <laughs> So, Morris, I was totally blown away when I saw how spectacular the Seuss Creek Botanical Garden is. What inspired you to create this garden? I always loved plants from a very early age, and so that just grew as I got older. And I started uh, collecting plants here about 40-some years ago, and uh, my inspiration really came from visiting other gardens. So, you know, this is a beautiful romantic garden, but it's 22 acres, you know. I bet, uh, do you rely quite a bit on volunteers? Yes, we do now. Uh, three years ago, this wonderful group named Twigs um, appeared and asked if they couldn't volunteer here. They do a wide variety of tasks from propagation through garden maintenance. So what inspired you to open this beautiful garden to the public? Well, I always thought that I didn't want to see it developed, and so I knew eventually I wanted to be a, a public garden, but just for the immediate surrounding community, so they could walk through occasionally. And is it the garden that you wanted to create? I didn't have background in horticultural training, but uh, I sort of took ideas from other places, and yes, I think at this point I'm, I'm somewhat satisfied but you know improvements are always there to be made. Well I'll tell you what I think it's one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen and I just appreciate so much that you've opened it up so all of us get to enjoy it. Nice job. Oh well, thank you so much Cisco. I really appreciate that. 
The Seuss Creek Botanical Garden is open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 3. It is worth a trip to Auburn. Oh, it sure is. And you know, you don't just get to walk around and look at the plants. You get to buy the plants. Oh. This is my kind of garden right here. I like here. this one. It's a dwarf goat's beard. That is so cool. It has this white feathery flower. It's really a neat plant. <laughs> what other plants do I need? Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Thanks cute. for watching. Now, come out and see one of the new gems in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Ooh, I like this one too.